You know, it actually turns out to be not all that complicated to do video editing. But who knew? I certainly didn't know when I began. I started out on a PC uh, using Windows Movie Maker. And like a lot of PC pieces of software, uh, not a whole lot of documentation comes with that, even though it does come right with the operating system. So I stumbled across it. At the time, I wanted to create some videos to, to get some messages out there. And it was total trial and error. I mean, I was sitting there trying to figure out how do you do titles. I had to do them, redo them, and re-re-redo them. So uh, a lot of editing that way. More recently, I've switched over to the Mac, and that does make it easier, but again, trial and error. I mean, I, I, if you sort of were able to see my early videos relative to the ones that I can put out now, I mean, there's been quite a learning curve in doing that. So it's about figuring out where do you put the, the cuts, and how do you fit in the transitions, and where do you put titles, and how do you get them to not you know, be right over the face of the person that you're kind of you know, trying to frame in the, in the image. So there was a lot to learn. But once you've got kind of the basic skills down, it, you start to be able to, I guess it's like learning anything. It's like learning a language. You stop thinking about the words and you start actually stating phrases and communicating. And, and I think video can be like that too. Once you get through the technicalities of, of what you're doing with the editing, you can kind of forget about that and let it be in the background and start to really focus on creating an artistic presentation or a nice flow to, to where you're putting cuts and transitions. So it turns out not to be that difficult, but I guess like anything, it takes a long time to make it look easy. Video editing. Wow, I feel like I was through the dark ages in video editing. When I first started with video, and I was about 11 years old at the local community theater, and we would sit up on these horses, we call them, above the seats, and we had one camera stationary in the back, and then we had a switcher. That literally would switch among the three cameras. So depending on what the director was seeing, and I often was the director, even at that age, we would switch among those cameras. But we only could do it one time. We weren't saving the video from each of those cameras, so you either got it on the fly or you didn't. Now, we weren't looking for artistic masterpieces uh, in those days. We were looking to help the actors on stage and to work with the videotape that this scientist from the DuPont company was testing by doing this. So we went from there, and what was the next advance? The next advance for me was having two actual video players into one video recorder. You'd tape with three different cameras, two different cameras, let's stick to two. You'd go with two cameras, and then you'd start each one of those, and you'd have to shoot off a uh, flash from a camera to make sure that you got them started exactly the same place. So on that camera, you would look for where that burst of light was, and you'd start both those um, playback units at the same time into a third recorder, again using a switcher. So both would be running and I would look ahead and I'd try to decide which had bet and I'd go to this playback unit and then I'd go to this one. So again, you never had the chance to do it over again unless you wanted to spend all those hours. It was on the fly as it was happening. That's how I was the second step. The third step, when I started with digital video, is that we would do two camera pickups and then I would have to suck in that video into my computer because it was on tape, and then in real time I played it back from the unit into the computer. Well, you can imagine, that computer hiccups once during that hour of taking back in that video tape, you've lost the whole thing, you have to start over again. So you'd get several cameras worth in, you do your editing at that point in what's called um, linear, non-linear destructive, no destruction going on here. You weren't ruining any of the original video and you were doing the editing. But the computers couldn't hold all that video, so you'd do the first section, you'd offload it all. You'd bring on all the rest of the clips, you'd do the next section, you'd offload it for however many you had to do. And then you would take on the finished clips, take them back in, put those together, and you'd wind up, wow. And I did some feature length videos. I would follow a band for a year, I would follow a high school class for a year. I would have 20 or 30 hours of video to get it down to a feature length two-hour, 90-minute, two-hour video. That was a lot of off and on. Today, when we photograph, when we use camcorders, we either take the card out and plug that right into our computer, or we have it onto a hard drive or a flash drive within that, and we plug that right into the camera, so that, right into the computer, so that it goes in so much more easily. We can then manipulate the video. The files are larger if you're using HD. But it turns out it's much easier to be able to do that. So I slogged my way through from being 
11 until now learning video, but at least I learned at that point all the different things I could do. So my horizon was pretty broad, and I knew a lot of the things that I could do in editing. Now it's just making sure that the program that I used would do those things that I learned how to do when I was much younger.